I. LS swapped my RX-8. So this build spanned over about a year time frame and I documented the whole thing right here on the channel. And now that it is complete, it is time to provide you guys with a full cost breakdown of the build and of the swap and also a full parts list that it took to complete it. This video I've been planning to make for a long time, but as you can see, the garage is full and the video has been getting pushed back uh, because of all my other projects. So I got the new Mark VI here, uh, GTI engine is getting ready to pull um, because that engine is blown. The custom supercharger kit on the MR2 Spider is uh, in its final stages and actually just about ready to make boost. So that is very exciting and uh, coming up quick. And I'm playing around back here with some cool stuff on the spare onesies I have from the Celica. Uh, I'm fitting up this K-Series intake to the engine. Uh, with a, the adapter plate that I designed myself and along with fitting up that turbo, which will ultimately go onto either the Celica or the Matrix. So uh, like I said, a lot of projects going on here that have been keeping me uh, from making this video in particular. So the purpose of the LS Swap RX-8 at this point and the way I built the car is to be a comfortable and fun street car while also being able to turn into a good, reliable drift car uh, with just a few modifications. So no matter how fun the car is to drive though, uh, I always tell people I'm never gonna have as much fun driving this car as I had building the car. And that's just what I love to do. That's what I have fun doing uh, at this point in my life. And that is really the main focus here on the channel is building stuff and having fun doing it. So throughout the build, I did keep a live spreadsheet, uh, keeping track of every expense that I had on the car because one of the goals for this car was to build the car for less than what uh, the car would be worth after I'm done. Uh, I had to keep track of all those expenses. So that is an extremely hard thing to do when I'm building a project car is to build it for less than what it's gonna be worth whenever you're done. Uh, but it's always a goal and it's possible if you find the right deals, uh, buy the right parts, you don't go overkill in areas that you don't need to. And that is exactly what I tried to do uh, with this RX-8 build. Anyways, there's a lot to go over, so let's uh, get to it. All right guys, so I have the spreadsheet pulled up on my computer here, so I will just go down through it. I have it broken up into sections to help organize some of these numbers. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the shell. So this is the actual cost of buying the car and getting a shell to start fresh with. This doesn't include any modifications to the chassis, but just getting the car in general. So starting with the car, I bought it uh, with a blown up motor for $2,000 and including the tax and title that came out to $2,246. First things I did after I got it up on jack stands was sell a few items. So I was able to sell uh, the wheels that were on for $400. Uh, it came with two aftermarket fiberglass bumpers that I sold for $200. Um, I also sold the eBay coilovers that were on it for $266. I sold the catalytic converter on it because I wouldn't be needing that for $630. I sold the engine to somebody actually making a piece of art out of the rotary uh, for $100. Uh, I had a bunch of scrap items. That was a really rough cat back that somebody made uh, and just other random big metal pieces that I was able to scrap, uh, including some engine components and whatnot. Uh, so I got $50 for scrap and it came with an additional catless mid pipe uh, that was actually a really good brand name that I ended up selling for $161. Uh, and then finally, a few other expenses to get the car, $75 to rent the trailer to pick it up and $95 in gas. So total money into the shell, get it home, engines out and ready to start fresh, $609. Not too bad. Um, I would say that's an actual realistic price. You can get a clean RX-8 for, uh, sell a bunch of items off of it and you could start fresh with an RX-8 shell for that much money. Uh, that would not be hard to do. All right, next I'm gonna move on to the chassis itself. So this would be any modifications I made to the actual chassis. Um, again, this is some stuff that maybe I sold off of the car originally, but this is anything I bought for it and did to it. So I'm gonna start with a lot of the major components and then I'll just kind of add up the miscellaneous stuff. So so first big thing, coilovers. I went with Feel 441 Plus coilovers. These are with the, the Swift Springs. These were one of the items I decided to uh, go ahead and get a quality set of coilovers. And this was one of the items that I wanted to be good at drifting if I decided it to. And also, again, just a comfortable street car. So I bought those Feel coilovers uh, used for $1,272. That was about a $500 discount, give or take, from a brand new set. I bought the wheels and tires, uh, the Conte, Conte Tandems, I bought for $715. That was 
uh, wheels and tires separately. The tires were used, got them mounted, $750 total. I put on new rotors and pads. I went with power stop rotors up front. Uh, and then I just got a kind of cheaper drilled and slotted rotor for the back. Uh, total rotors and pads were $180. The car actually came with power stop pads uh, that the guy never installed. So those were a free, uh, free item for myself. I installed P2M adjustable front uh, camber arms. Uh, those were $327. Again, this is an item for uh, drifting to make it drift the bowl. That adjustable camber up front is extremely important. Going along with the suspension, I bought the bump steer kit from ls1rx8.com. Uh, honestly, these tie rod extensions, you could probably find a universal uh, type of kit and make your own. I'm, I haven't looked into that too much, but the $250 for this kit made it super easy to install. And for the most part, uh, I haven't had any issue with them yet, so I think they're a good option. Next item was the ECU. I had to buy a ECU uh, with the VATS deleted. I also got it uh, tuned to the speed sensor in my AR5 transmission. Uh, that was off of eBay, 129 bucks for that ECU tuned and ready to go. I am just running the GM ECU for now. Uh, as far as the engine goes, it uh, only needs a stock tune and it's running very well. Uh, intake components, this would include, sorry, this should actually go with the engine. If I have that in the wrong spot, move that. So next on the list, ABS relocation. So this includes, included already um, flared custom lines with the fittings and everything, uh, a few union joints, and this was basically to extend the lines uh, and move the ABS unit down below the frame rail. So $90 for all of those lines, uh, everything needed to move that. Next is the paint and clear coat um, and stuff I needed to paint the engine bay. So uh, probably some primer included in that, color matched paint, clear coat, $90 for everything. Some, miscell some miscellaneous items coming up, battery post, thermostat and fuse box, $65 total. Hood struts were $33 on Amazon. Those seem to be working fine. They're a little squeaky, but they do the trick. Battery hold down was $40. Steering extension I got from LS1 RX8. That was $65. Uh, that one I had a few issues with, so maybe read about that on the Facebook group and see what other people say. Maybe there's another option for that. Next up is the gauges and the uh, pod for the pillar on the interior. So those are glow shift gauges. I was actually able to find refurbished gauges from glow shift. So I got those a little bit cheaper, $115 total for oil pressure and coolant temp sensor gauge with the with the pod. Hood latches were $79. Those are these custom uh, hood pins and hood latches. I went with a decent brand because I didn't want a cheap eBay, uh, eBay part that would break. Universal motor mounts were $65. These were custom weldable ones. So basically they give you a portion of the motor mount and you got to weld on the rest of it to be a custom fit. Uh, for the LS motor. Those worked well, 65 bucks. Some random material here for solid mounting my differential was $81, along with some other material to make my custom solid bushings for the subframe. Some other random motor, motor mount hardware, $40. Motor trans mount material. The other motor and transmission mount material was $45. I bought a shift boot, $31. Shift knob, $20. I was able to make $40 back on random scrap. I bought some cheap end links to replace the rusty ones I had for my sway bar, $22. Random weld wire, $16. Gas pedal that I had to custom fit, $27. Throttle cable, $21. Gas, $40. I must have included some gas money to go buy a part maybe, a used part off a of marketplace. I'm not 100% sure what that was for. Some random cleaning supplies, $10. Rear lips. The rear lips for the rear bumper were $153. And then I have another, I have two more listings for paint. Uh, so I must not have included the red color matched paint in my first one uh, for the bay. That was $66 and then $107. I think I was experimenting a little bit, so I spent a little bit extra um, to figure out which one matched the best. So that's why I spent a little bit extra money there. Uh, and then the side skirts I got used. Those are KBD side skirts for $200. So total then for the chassis, um, and some things maybe don't belong in there, but total was $43.54, $4,354, which brings our total to, let me do some quick math here, $4,963. So it's already uh, getting up there. A lot of that stuff, stuff really adds up quickly. Ugh. Gotta have my Diet Coke. All right, 
Next, I'm gonna move on to the transmission. If you watched from the beginning of the build, you know the transmission was an area that I tried to save some money. So instead of going with a uh, 350Z transmission or a T56 or a TR6060, I just got decided to go cheap and buy the AR5 transmission, which is the five speed out of the two wheel drive Colorados. So I was able to source an AR5 from a junkyard for $200. That was a deal, deal of the century. The adapter plate I bought straight from Fabot for $497.44. I bought a slave cylinder for $44 and a 4L60E bell housing for $76. Clutch master cylinder was one from a Land Cruiser uh, for $31. That is one of the best budget items I got for the car so far. Vallejo stage one clutch was $253. Random cleaning supplies, $10. Input shaft seal, $12.50. T56 to AN3 adapter. That is the custom uh, clutch line fitting that you need to adapt from the slave cylinder to an AN3 line. I bought an AN3 line uh, custom made 48 inches long for $27. AN3 to M10 by 1.0 fitting is uh, $10. That's a fitting to adapt your AN3 to the clutch master cylinder from the Land Cruiser. Flywheel bolts were $27. Pressure plate bolts were $14. Shifter, uh, that is one from a Mustang that I used to make my shifter linkage and uh, get the AR5 to line up with the hole. Uh, that was $33. And the clutch pedal assembly I bought for $94. That was a brand new OEM clutch pedal assembly. And what I'll say, some of these prices, this was all a year ago, I've already looked and some of these prices have jumped way up. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you're watching this video. I did include links in this spreadsheet that I'll provide to you. So you'll be able to click on that link and see what the price is doing. Um, if any of these links don't work for some reason in the spreadsheet, feel free to message me and I will send you the exact part I bought. Uh, and also I can update this uh, to make it easier on everybody. So total transmission costs come out to $1,349.34. We'll round that up to $1,350. So now up to this point through the transmission, our total comes to, do some quick math, comes to $6,312, quickly adding up. All right, next is a small section. This is the drive shaft uh, section. This is everything I need to hook the AR5 up to my rear stock RX-8 differential. So custom drive shaft I bought from an eBay seller who does custom like drive shafts to the size you need. $295, I thought that was a good deal. You can also go to some of the uh, more well-known websites. The RX-8 yoke, this is what you need to adapt a universal joint to your RX-8 differential. So that was $48. A 1330 to 7260 joint, uh, that's the U-joint, was $33. And then a slip yoke was $49. The other U-joint that I need came with the custom drive shaft. So before I add up that section, I'll go ahead and include the exhaust section in with it. So this is all everything I needed for the exhaust. So I'll just, I'll just read it as, as I have it listed. A lot of these are just random pieces of pipe that I needed. So two and a half inch pipe, $40. Muffler, muffler, I bought this used $40. That was a higher quality stainless steel muffler that I got used, uh, or at least secondhand unused on, and it was opened. So $40. An adapter, probably from one size to another, probably three inch to two and a half inch was $12. Flex pipes, those were from Vibrant, and then also some heat wrap, $138. Some V-bands and hanger rod, $62. O2 bungs plus sensor, so I had to buy an O2 sensor, $34. Three inch pipe for the rear was $113. Muffler tip was $37. And the headers, these were, uh, I would say a budget option, similar to a hooker header. So those were a cast manifold, uh, ceramic coated in silver. So those are a good budget option from what I can tell. And the ceramic coating is holding up really well after a couple thousand miles. $297 for those. And total for exhaust was $773. Not cheap, but also not too expensive for what I'd say a custom stainless exhaust. I'd say I did pretty well. And that includes headers and everything, so not too bad. So now with our drive shaft and exhaust added in, our total is $7,510. So we're getting there, we're getting up there. So now for the big item and the main item of the car, the engine swap. So the engine itself is a 5.7 liter aluminum block uh, from a 2002 Camaro. 
I uh, bought the engine, it had 38,000 miles on it. The car was totaled, but the engine was still good. So I got a rockin' deal on the engine, $2,500 for engine, harness. Uh, it did come with an ECU, so that is something I could potentially sell, I just haven't yet. All for $2,500. That being said, I did sell items off the engine that I didn't need. That includes the power steering pump and alternator bracket, $210. I sold the AC bracket, who knew that could be worth something? $80, somebody paid for that. AC pump was $49, or AC compressor, I guess. I sold the motor mounts for $45, and I sold the exhaust manifolds for $41. So total engine, just right off the rip before buying anything else, came to just over $2,000, $2,075. So here's the list of everything else I decided to buy for it. I had to buy a new oil pan because I cracked that, $75. Alternator bracket, since I sold the other one, I bought a billet one, $58. Rear main seal, $17. A bolt kit, because things got to look nice, $53. Intake gaskets and main seal, I think that's for the front, uh, the front crank seal, $40. Gas to pick up the engine, so I had to drive for it, $20 in gas. Coil brackets from Amazon were $46. The math, I decided to go OEM, not mess around, $118 for the math. Whew, that was a lot of money. Alternator plug, wire, etc. Everything I needed to basically wire tuck the car. Well, I can't say everything. This was a bulk of stuff to wire tuck the car, uh, different plugs and stuff that I needed, and probably a bunch of random stuff that I forgot to write down, but they all got lumped in. $250 for all that stuff. I bought a new PCV hose because the one I had was cracked, $77. Uh, I bought a cool dipstick from eBay probably for $30. Belt and pulley, um, probably an idler pulley, $33. Oil level sensor plug for the oil pan, $13. And the intake, uh, that would include couplers, filter, piping, uh, $161. I probably spent more than I had to there because I had to uh, kind of piece that together and I had some trial and error, which is okay. Moving on to the cooling setup, expansion tank was the Moroso tank, $150. Coolant hoses, $58. Heat shielding uh, for my coolant hoses was $38. Uh, more coolant hoses, heater hoses and different fittings to get the expansion tank all connected. So that'd be like the barb fittings on the expansion tank, the elbows, different connectors, whatever, hose clamps. Uh, $185. Radiator setups, this is the coil rad aluminum radiator. Uh, with fans and shroud uh, was $346. I was able to piece that all together. The radiator I did buy uh, secondhand, I believe. Yeah, Brent, it was it was new, it had a dent on the side. You can't see the dent, $346 for all that. Thermostat, swivel housing, $21. Uh, fuel setup, only two items here. Fuel line setups, this was just the universal, uh, I think AN6 kit that I got with some fittings and some line. I only had to use about eight inches of the line. So that was $87, and now I have a bunch of extra lines and fittings to use on future projects. And the fuel pump, I bought a Beachworks uh, fuel pump for $105. Engine upgrades, This is these are upgrades to hopefully help the car uh, do well in drifting. These were unnecessary, but things I wanted to do. Pickup tube brace, $11. Oil pan baffle from Improved Racing, $206. AccuSump, mounted right up front here. $175 adapter plate. This was to hook up the oil cooler to the engine block uh, and have AN10 lines running into the engine block. $25. I went with an eBay version of that because it is a chunk of metal and as long as it doesn't leak, it works. And mine worked. No leaks. $25. M18 to 10AM adapter. These are fittings to thread into the stock oil cooler, which I used um, to connect to an AN10, $13 for two of those. Manual ball valve, this is a manual valve that goes on the AccuSump. I also have an electronic valve that came with it. I bought that AccuSump secondhand. Uh, I just didn't hook that up yet, so I want the manual valve for now, $32. And check valve, this is for the AccuSump system, $42. And then lines and fittings, those are all the AN10 fittings and lines, $124. So that cost could change depending on your setup and all that good stuff. Total engine cost, this may be the biggest chunk of change out of everything, biggest section. Total cost came out to $4,684. So that'll really up our final cost there. And let's go ahead and do some quick math and add that up and this will give us our total cost. 
so with that $4,684 added in, our total cost to build this car, minus, keep in mind, minus, 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 hours and hours and hours of work, $12,194. The odds that I'm missing uh, maybe a couple things that I bought at the tail end and I also have some items that I bought for it that I haven't put on it yet like a bucket seat steering wheel roll cage uh, stay tuned for all that stuff it's going in um, I bought all that stuff but haven't put them on yet so this also doesn't include like I bought an extra set of knuckles so I could cut and weld those for more steering angle random little stuff I would say probably tack on another 250 to 500 dollars on that 12,000 number uh, and that's where it's at right now because I probably forgot some items so again I'm curious to hear your guys thoughts on how you think I made out on the car as a whole I've seen these things go a wide range of prices for what they sell for not that I'm planning on selling it but that was you know part of my goal was to keep it cost efficient this spreadsheet that I was reading off of has a full list of links to every exact part that I used along with all the costs that I just went over. Um, that spreadsheet is gonna be linked right here, I believe. Um, so feel free to download that, edit it if you need to, use a template similar. Um, it's pretty basic. I actually, the one I originally kept track of everything on was super messy, so I cleaned it up and kept it basic for everybody. Um, but go ahead and click the links on there, check it out. If, again, like I said, if any of the links don't work, uh, feel free to reach out to me and um, I, can, I can let you know what I did and I'll, I'll uh, replace the link to, to make sure it works. So. so if you're looking to do the same swap into an RX-8, I will be honest, there is a lot of ways you can cut costs off of what I did. Um, you can go 5.3 uh, truck engine, you cannot shave and paint all your bay, you cannot do an AccuSump, you cannot do oil pan baffle. There is so much you can do to save money. So uh, obviously everything is not necessary, but this is how I wanted to build it and that cost is what I ended up with. So if you've watched this far, it is not over yet. Please enjoy the last few minutes of straight LS RX-8 driving and sounds and noises. Thank you guys for watching. See you later. This thing is honestly my most reliable car at this point. I haven't really touched it since I finished the swap in May. And I put about 2,500 miles on it. <laughs>